in this uh, lecture we will be uh, discussing the certain concepts related to open sets in r we will uh, give several examples uh, which will describe the concepts uh, clearly and then uh, go on to prove certain related results so first of all let us uh, make the concept of nearness to a point uh, precise i have been uh, saying that we, this is something which we would be very much uh, requiring for uh, dis defining a limit of a function and uh, which is the backbone of calculus so to say so suppose i take any x in r any point then uh, by the delta neighborhood or uh, by that is the precise term and which means that all the points which are near to x described by the distance delta so let us see what is the exact definition if you take any positive delta then look at the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta then recall what does that mean that if you have any point y in the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta then uh, the distance between that is the modulus of x minus y is going to be less than delta so the distance between x and y is less than delta this is the basic uh, notion which explains what is the meaning of nearness near nearness is not a uh, precise term what we say is that uh, it is describing what is called a neighborhood now this neighborhood means exactly that the points which are near x in a certain sense and uh, uh, since this neighborhood is dependent on the positive number delta we give it a special uh, uh, nomenclature we call it delta neighborhood of x so by delta neighborhood of x all we mean is that we wish to have we wish to uh, talk about the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta so observe that obviously x is a point in x minus delta to x plus delta open interval so sometimes it is useful to look at the neighborhood of x but ignore the point x while discussing certain uh, things concepts so for that we have specifically given a name we call that a deleted delta neighborhood is a delta neighborhood from which the point x has been removed or deleted so that is it is precisely x minus delta to x plus delta open interval minus the point x so minus the set x containing the point uh, x so that means precisely equal to the union of two intervals open interval x minus delta to x union open interval x to x plus delta so you have just taken this open interval and left out the point x from it so as i said this is the basis on which neighborhoods are defined so a general neighborhood would be a subset of r which would contain a delta neighborhood of uh, the point so suppose i take a subset of r then uh, i have called it n n to denote the neighborhood's first alphabet so n is a neighborhood of x if you can find a delta neighborhood of x which is a subset of n so obviously again a neighborhood will contain the point x not only that it will contain points which are again let me say that uh, imprecise term near x in some sense so precisely it is just this that you need all points you should be able to find a distance delta so that all points at a distance less than delta from x are inside the set n then n is called a neighborhood of x so again as in this uh, second point what we do is sometimes it will be useful as you will see uh, 
that uh, if we leave out the point x from the neighborhood then it is uh, convenient to mention some things so what i am trying to say is that a deleted neighborhood of x is a neighborhood of x from which the point x has been uh, removed or we are ignoring the point x when we are going to talk about the neighborhood so precisely we will look at a deleted neighborhood of x okay so this is our uh, basic concept and dependent on that we will define what is an open set so i'm saying dependent on x but the way we start uh, talking about is that here what we did was we chose a point x in r and then looked at certain subsets of r and determined which are the neighborhoods of the point and which are not anything which will not satisfy this will be not a neighborhood and uh, now what i'm doing is that i'm just looking at a set so from as if i'm looking at the whole concept from a different angle so i'm looking at a set subset of r and then uh, i'm trying to find out which points are the uh, special points which we will call interior points of s or not so in the earlier case what you had done was you your focus was on the point x and then you were looking at various subsets of r and trying to find out which were the neighborhoods here what you are doing is you are looking at a subset of r and you are trying to find out which are the so called interior points of s so what is the definition of an interior point it is precisely those elements of s for which you will be able to find a delta positive such that the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is a subset of s so again it is an interior point means that it should belong to the set not only that points which are near x to a certain extent should also belong to the set s so if you compare this definition with the neighborhood of the point x you notice that uh, this is uh, clear that if s is a neighborhood of the point x then x is an interior point of s and vice versa so that is what we have mentioned here that s is a neighborhood of a point x if and only if x is an interior point of s so all our our uh, universal set is r so whenever i am talking about a point uh, at least it is a real number whenever i am talking about a set at least it is a subset of r so even if i forget saying that that should always be there in our mind when we go beyond r we will mention it okay so we have described what is the meaning of an interior point now if you look at the set of all interior points of a set then we will call it uh, not surprisingly the interior of s and uh, i have chosen the notation int s to mean interior s this is not standard uh, in some books uh, you will find another notation which is just a little circle on the top of s and that means interior s but uh, i find this more uh, convenient because it uh, gives you the understanding as to what you are talking about instead of trying to remember more uh, obscure notations so i will be using interior s but uh, obviously uh, s uh, with a circle on top can be also small circle on top can also be chosen as a notation whatever notation you choose one should keep this in mind that when we are uh, talking about certain things or writing about certain things in mathematics we should always make clear as to what our notations mean that is one of the necessary things i'm digressing a little bit but uh, this i would like to tell you because there are certain notations 
like this uh, particular open interval which doesn't cause much problem but if you recall from uh, uh, the when you look at a point in the plane that is also expressed by the same type of notation right so when you are talking about mathematics you always uh, should uh, keep on making clear as to what your notations uh, are meaning actually otherwise you will not be so uh, you will not be able to communicate properly with others in mathematics so this is something i've just digressed a little bit but i wanted to stress this point here so that it will be helpful to you when uh, you are uh, giving lectures or when you are writing up a, a report or something in mathematics okay so what we have decided that if you look at the set of all interior points of a given set then we will just call it the interior of s and denote by ints then it is a simple observation that interior s is always a subset of s because uh, how are you describing interior s it is just the set of all interior points and what are interior points first of all they are points of x uh, first of all they are points of s and then they satisfy this property so since they are necessarily points of s this is obviously true that interior s has to be a subset of s now it is all points of s which are some having some special property that you should be able to find a delta greater than zero so that x minus delta x plus delta open interval is a subset of s so this is okay very good so what a set s is called open if interior s is equal to s that means every point of s should be an interior point of s then we say that the set is open so notice that you want interior s is equal to s you know that for any set s interior s is a subset of s so when is the set s in particular an open set if the other subset relation also holds you want a set to be open if interior s interior s is equal to s but you know that for any set s interior s is a subset of s so s will be open if and only if s is a subset of interior s that is sufficient so this is our definition but notice that this just means that this if we check this that is sufficient to claim that interior s is equal to s because interior points are obviously always points of the set okay so i hope i have made myself clear now i have written something in red in this uh, particular slide you note that empty set is an open set so let us go back to the definitions here i have not assumed anything about the emptiness or non emptiness of the set i have just said that suppose i take a subset of r and then i am going to call it an open set if interior s is equal to s what will happen if i look at the empty set then if i start looking at this particular definition if i try to find an interior point of s i will not be able to find any point because interior point means i should start with a point of the set so that something happens so if i start with an empty set it doesn't have any point so after that anything to occur is vacuously true that is since it doesn't have any point you don't have to um, look at what property the point has to belong has to satisfy sorry so if you look at the empty set it will not have any interior point clearly because it doesn't have any point as such so since it will not have any point or rather if you look at this it will be clearer that if s is empty that any subset of the empty set is empty so interior s is empty so if interior set of empty set is empty 
then interior of empty set and empty set are actually equal because they are both empty set so it is justified so th to say that empty set is an open set so what i have uh, given you is a argument which is in favor of saying that empty set is an open set we would not like to call it a proof because a proof would require a little bit uh, more uh, rigorousness more rigor with rather than what we have given so instead of saying that uh, we are giving a proof that empty set is an open set i am saying that we are giving a reasoning as to why this makes sense that empty set is an open set so we say this in mathematics why saying that by convention empty set is an open set i hope i have made myself clear if s s is empty then interior s by whatever logic we have or definitions which we have given here should be empty and that implies that empty set should be open this makes sense so therefore we are making a convention that empty set is an open set always so let us try to look at more examples suppose i look at the open interval ab and take any point x in ab so i have uh, drawn a very simple uh, picture here to describe this concept so i have this open interval ab which is a bounded open interval open yeah so bounded open interval so that means a is not there b is not there that we describe by putting a first bracket here to explain that we have all real numbers in the line segment between a and b except a and b and suppose i take any point x inside there okay so x is going to be greater than a and less than b so the distance between x and a that is modulus of a minus x and modulus of b minus x are going to be what modulus of a minus x is just x minus a because x is greater than a and modulus of b minus x is b minus x because b is greater than x so this is this two numbers are actually the distance between x and a and x and b they are two positive numbers so if you look at the minimum of those two positive numbers you will get a positive number so between 0 and this number there will be infinitely many deltas so what we are trying to say is that if i choose such a delta then if i look at the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta that will be a subset of this open interval ab now uh, that is a very easy to see i have just given the explanation here that uh, since uh, delta is less than x minus a so obviously a is less than x minus delta x minus delta is always less than x plus delta because uh, delta is positive S since delta is positive you cancel out x here and then you get two delta greater than 0 so that is the inequality x minus delta to x plus delta and x plus delta is less than b because delta is less than b minus x so take x on the left hand side you get x plus delta is less than b so because of this inequality if you take any real number between x minus delta to x plus delta it will be automatically between a and b so what is the meaning of this inequality that the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is going to be a subset of ab so what what have we done you just stare at it once more that we have any point in the open interval ab so the distance between a and x and b and x are going to be the distance is going to be positive so distance is the modulus of x minus a and x minus b right and uh, the way i have drawn is just to 
draw it clearly but this x needn't be at such, such a nice central point it could be very near a or it could be very near b but since it is not going to be b and it is not going to be a so therefore the distance between a and x and the distance between x and b is going to be positive always and that is the crucial thing which we observe and that tells us that it is possible to find a delta in fact it is possible to find infinitely many deltas for which the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta would be a subset of open interval a b so by definition what do you get that if i take x to be any point in a b it has to be an interior point of the open interval a b right so therefore what you have shown is that every point of open interval a b is an interior point of open interval a b and therefore open interval a b is an open set so this is an extraordinarily nice result and you realize now that why we did we call these type of intervals open intervals because they were actually open sets so for any a and for any b such that a less than b you have shown that open interval a b is an open set so in particular you have also shown that any delta neighborhood is also an open set just take this to be a and this to be b so in, take any point x in r look at the delta neighborhood of x that will be an open set so that is what i have mentioned here that if i take any x in r and take any epsilon greater than 0 instead of delta you can write anything you like uh, any mathematical symbol so instead of delta you can write epsilon so i have written epsilon here so for any x in r and any epsilon positive if you look at the open interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon by this argument you have seen that this is an open set in r so open subset of r this uh, phrase is also written as open set in r so let us continue let us look at the closed interval a b now so remember what is the meaning of this it means that you look at all real numbers between a and b including a and b both very good so if you look at the previous argument that if you take any real number which is strictly between a and b then that was an interior point of open interval a b so that is you had found a delta positive so that this x minus delta to x plus delta open interval was a subset of open interval a b now open interval a b is a subset of closed interval a b right because all you are doing is and you are including two extra points a and b to this to get the close interval so if you take any point in open interval a b that will be automatically an interior point of close interval a b also so this much is a obvious uh, deduction from the previous example that if you look at the open interval a b that is going to be a subset of interior of close interval a b very good now what do you want to find out is what is exactly the interior of close interval a b so what do you have to now do is look at the point a and look at the point b whether a is an interior point or not b is an interior point or not this is all you have to check because for interior points the points should belong to the set you have already observed that all other points which are strictly between a and b they are all interior points the only left out points are a and b and for that you need to check as you can see from the uh, diagram or picture which i have drawn here they are not going to be interior points so what is the justification the justification is that you take any epsilon greater than zero then the open interval a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon will have a portion a minus epsilon to a right 
So that open interval a minus epsilon to a means all real numbers which are strictly less than a. So if they are going to be less than a, then obviously they cannot belong to the closed interval a b. That is what I have tried to show here by this red uh, crosses uh, of the line segment that this particular portion can never belong to the closed interval a b because any real number in this portion is going to be less than a. What, however small epsilon you take, however near this b, there will be some extra thing here which will be less than a. So therefore, this will not be a subset of a uh, closed interval a b. Similarly, if you take any open interval b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon, there is a subset of that open interval b to b plus epsilon, which consists of those points which are greater than b. So since they are greater than b, they cannot belong to the closed interval a b. So this portion, however small epsilon you take, there will be a little bit which would be uh, greater than b here. So therefore, you will never be able to get a open interval of the type b minus epsilon to b plus epsilon, which would be a subset of closed interval a b. I hope I am clear. So what does that tell you? That tells you that this a which was included in the set and b which was also included in the set cannot be an interior point of closed interval a b. So interior of closed interval a b has to be precisely equal to open interval a b. Therefore, <coughs> excuse me, closed interval a b is not an open set because to for anything to be an open set it has to be that set has to be equal to its interior which is not the case here here the interior of closed interval a b is a subset proper subset of closed interval a b therefore closed interval a b is not an open set now this uh, argument holds also for the semi open intervals that is, if you look at an uh, look at an interval a b where you are including a and uh, excluding b, so that the semi open interval this one, then for this also the interior of this set will be open interval a b for the same reasoning. Now, now you don't have b, so the only point which you have to check is for a, and a cannot be an interior point by the same argument. Similarly, if you just leave out A and include B, then again, you don't have to bother about A because A is not an element of this set, but B is an element of this set and B cannot be an interior point again by the same argument. So, interior of this semi-open interval or semi-closed interval, whichever you like to say, is again going to be the open interval A. B. So, for all these three other bounded intervals, the op interior is always going to be open interval AB. So neither of these three are going to be an open set. This we saw in details and the same arguments will tell you that this and this are also not open sets. So for bounded intervals, the only open, inter uh, open set is the open interval AB. Very good. Next, let us look at unbounded intervals which of them are open intervals. So first you look at the unbounded interval open a to infinity. So as you realize by now I think that when I am saying that this is an open interval, we are using the term open interval because it is an open set. So what is the argument? Argument is similar to what we gave for bounded intervals. Let us see. So if I take any point in open interval a to infinity, infinity is a symbol as you recall it means that this point is going to be a real number greater than a so there is a positive distance between a and x the distance between a and x is x minus a because x is greater than a distance between two points z and w of r Suppose z and w are real numbers, then distance between z and w is modulus of z minus w, right? So that 
in this particular case, since x is greater than a, the distance is modulus of a minus x or modulus of x minus a, whatever you want, the way you want to write it, and that is going to be equal to x minus a because x is greater than a. Okay, so this x minus a is a positive number, so you can find infinitely many positive numbers less than x minus a. So just choose any one, let delta be between 0 and x minus a, then just uh, writing down the inequalities, you will get what? That a is less than x minus delta because delta is less than x minus a. Clear? And x minus delta is less than x plus delta is always true because delta is positive. So what have you got? That if you take any y between x minus delta to x plus delta, it is automatically greater than a. So it is going to be an element of the open interval a to infinity. So this interval x minus delta to x plus delta will be a subset of a to infinity. So that is the analytic way of writing it down. And uh, you can see from this picture that what have you done, what is the meaning of open interval in a infinity? That is you leave out this point a and look at this part of the real axis which is strictly on the right of a. So if you have any point there, it can be very near a, it can be very far away from a. But however near A it be or far from A it be, that point, the distance between that point and A will be positive. So you will be able to get a small thing here. If as near A you go, the delta will become smaller and smaller. For convenience of depiction, we have given this, uh, shown this distance as quite a large one, but x could be very near this. So in that case, it, the delta would be very small, but whatever be, uh, however small it be, you will be able to get a positive delta like this, so that this type of open segment would lie in the segment on the right-hand side of A. So that is what uh, geometrically you can observe, and you can also write it down precisely like this. So what have you got? You have got that any point of open interval A to infinity is an interior point of open interval A to infinity. Therefore, this open interval is an open set. So if you just look at the other way around, look at the open interval minus infinity to A. Remember, what is the meaning of this? It is the set of all real numbers which is strictly less than A. So if you take any x here, then that number x is going to be strictly less than a. So that means the distance between x and a is again positive. So what is the distance now? It is a minus x because a is greater than x. The distance is modulus of a minus x, but modulus of a minus x is equal to a minus x because a is greater than x. So between 0 and a minus x, you will be able to find infinitely many deltas, so choose any one of them. So again, if you do it analytically, then what do you have? You always have x minus delta is less than x plus delta because delta is positive. And since delta is less than a minus x, you get x plus delta is less than a. So if you take any point between x minus delta to x plus delta, that is automatically going to be less than a. So what does that mean? at any point between x minus delta to x plus delta is a point of the open interval minus infinity to a. Therefore, what you have shown is that any point of the open interval minus infinity to a is an interior point of minus infinity to a. So, what do you get? You get that this open interval minus infinity to a is also an open set. And you can see this from this picture very clearly that if x is any point less than a, strictly less than a, then obviously you can get a line segment like this, open line segment, which will be completely on the left hand side of a on the real line. So, again stressing the fact that x is an interior point of open interval minus infinity to a. If you just stare at it, I'll just go to the other slide uh, 
but uh, if you stare at it if you had included a here or included a here then what would have happened is all such points say for example in this one if you include a here then all points which are greater than a will still be interior points by the same argument the only question would be whether a is an interior point or not and a will not be an interior point by the argument which we gave earlier similar type of argument that if you take an open interval which contains a then there will be some portion of the open interval a, say suppose the open interval is a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon then there will be this uh, subset a minus epsilon to a open interval which would be not in the set because there will be points uh, between a minus epsilon and a which will be strictly less than a so that cannot belong to the set so that is what we are trying to say here that by similar reasonings as above the interior of closed interval a to infinity this means all x greater than equal to a will still be open interval a to infinity it this set which has one extra point that is a and this extra point a is not an interior point similarly for the other uh, type of unbounded interval if you look at the closed interval minus infinity to a this means all real numbers x which are less than or equal to a so anything which is strictly less than a is going to be an interior point and a cannot be an interior point right i'm sorry so a cannot be an interior point because if you just uh, look at any interval of this type um, a minus epsilon to a plus epsilon it will contain points on the right of a that is points which are greater than a so that will not be in the set and hence a cannot be an interior point so for interior of this is also open interval a infinity and interior of closed interval minus infinity to a is also open interval minus infinity to a so what does that tell you that neither of this these two closed intervals are open so we have four types of unbounded intervals of them two are open and two are not i think it is clear now okay and what about the set of real numbers the set of real numbers remember i had uh, said that we will also use the notation open interval notation from minus infinity to infinity to describe the set of real numbers so from where did this notation come it uh, comes from the concept of extended real number system where we had thought of minus infinity to infinity as numbers and uh, then we had said that we will say that any real number uh, x will satisfy the inequality minus infinity less than x less than infinity so the concept uh, the idea comes from there and here we are just using minus infinity and infinity as symbols and saying that we can write r like this so let us keep that in the clear in our mind and uh, we want to say that r is an open set for that this notation is not required but i'm stressing this because here i have used this uh, first bracket on both sides so it looks like an open interval and that is because r is an open set why is r an open set because it is your universal set as i said before that any point you take it is a point of r any subset you take it is a subset of r so whatever your point in r you take suppose little x and whatever delta you take positive then this open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is going to be a subset of r because r is i don't know what because it is clear i think huh? so if you look at any such open interval from x minus delta to x plus delta it means all real numbers which are greater than x minus delta and which are less than x plus delta so obviously it is a subset of r this is true for every real number x so every real number x is an interior point of uh, r therefore r is an open set i think i've made myself clear so these are a few examples let us look at some more so first of all let us look at a finite subset of r uh, 
so what i have done is that uh, i've chosen a set like this uh, capital s equal to x1 x2 etc xn and uh, when i'm drawing this uh, picture what i have done is that i've assumed that x1 is less than x2 is less than etc less than xn when you're writing down the set it is not necessary that you have to write down in the form that you write the least first and then go on to the greater than that and so on but since it is a finite set i can always list the elements <coughs> excuse me from the smallest to the largest so for convenience i have done that okay and so the blue uh, these uh, numbers mean that this is our set it consists of precisely these points x1 x2 etc etc so i want to find out what is the interior of s because i want to check whether s is open or not so to find out the interior of s i have to look at any particular element of the set so suppose i look at any particular element so i uh, precisely speaking look at any xj where j is between 1 and n and in the picture you can just say for example look at x2 so take any epsilon positive then what will happen if you look at x2 minus epsilon to x2 plus epsilon or in general if you look at xj minus epsilon to xj plus epsilon this is an infinite set the way i have drawn i have just drawn them disjoint from each other but uh, that may not be true there may be some overlapping but we don't care about all those things what is important is that the open interval xj minus epsilon to xj plus epsilon is necessarily an infinite set actually we have shown that this is uncountable so this infinite set cannot be a subset of the given finite set s so whatever be your epsilon positive however small if you look at the open interval xj minus epsilon to xj plus epsilon that cannot be a subset of s this is infinite this is finite so therefore what you can conclude is that xj cannot be an interior point of s so whatever point xj you take from the set s it cannot be an interior point so what does that mean it means that the interior of the set is empty so if you take a finite non empty set obviously i mean that so if you take a finite non empty set its interior is bound to be an empty set therefore the set is not an open set clear next example we look at the complement of the finite set what happens here so again i have taken a, a finite set x1 x2 xn but now i have seen that s is not open what what about the complement of s that is what i want to check so to justify that now i'm leaving out x1 x2 xn i have written them in red okay so i have this uh, real line the whole blue portion is the set r minus s except the points x1 x2 xn again just for convenience i have uh, depicted these points as x1 less than x2 less than etc less than xn that is not necessary when you write down the set here there is no such compulsion that x1 should be smaller or anything like that they are just n distinct points but uh, since they are only finitely many you can always list them if you like for your convenience starting from the least to the largest so since drawing a picture and uh, depicting the points there it is easier to do it like this we have listed it like that that is all okay so there is no necessity here that x1 should be the smallest or anything like that okay so suppose you have uh, your set r minus these finitely many points you want to find out whether r minus s is open or not so to find out whether it is open or not you have to take an arbitrary point of the set and check whether it is an interior point or not so you have chosen any x now just to explain this x could be anything on the left of the smallest of the x1s or it could be somewhere between x1 to xn 
x1 to xn in excluded or it could be some uh, point which is greater than all these numbers x1 to xn what i have done is i have just written down x in this picture for all the three cases so x could be here x could be here or x could be here so what we want to find out now that wherever x is is it possible to get an open interval containing x of this type open interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon which will sit inside which will be a subset of the complement of capital s so how will you determine that your x is not in the set s so look at the distance between x and x1 x and x2 etc x and xn so distance between x and xn is going to be positive because x is not equal to x1 similarly distance between x and x2 is going to be positive because x is not equal to x2 and so on x distance between x and xn is going to be positive because x is not equal to xn so all the all these distances x minus xj modulus of x minus xj for j is equal to 1 to n these are all positive numbers and how many positive numbers you have n positive numbers because you have fixed your x here and you are looking at its distance from the various xj's which belong to the set s and s is finite so you have finitely many positive numbers so the minimum of those finitely many positive numbers is still going to be positive so between this minimum which is a positive number and zero there will be infinitely many real numbers so choose any epsilon here so if you choose any epsilon here then as we have been giving the reasoning before this open interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon will not contain any of these points right because if xj was here say for example then x minus epsilon less than xj less than x plus epsilon means modulus of x minus xj is less than epsilon but that is not true epsilon is less than modulus of x minus xj so modulus of x minus xj is greater than epsilon means that xj cannot belong here and that is true for every j from 1 to n so this particular interval where epsilon is chosen in this fashion is a subset of the complement of capital s in r so what have you shown that if i take any point in the complement of s then it has to be in, in the interior of the complement of s therefore the complement of a finite set is bound to be open in this example and the previous example obviously i am taking my set to be non empty in this uh, complement of a finite set if s was empty then uh, r minus at s would be r and which we have already seen that is open so we don't have to bother about that so i have particularly chosen a non empty set here and also in the previous example so what did you see that a finite set is not open and complement of a finite set is open this also gives you an inkling that if you have an open set that doesn't necessarily mean that it is an open interval we have seen that every open interval is an open set but every open set need not be an open interval because what is r minus s going to look like it looks like minus infinity to x1 union open interval x1 to x2 the way i have drawn the picture right so open interval x1 to x2 then union open interval x2 to x3 etc union open interval x xn minus 1 to xn union open interval xn xn to infinity so it is a union of many intervals open intervals so it is not an open interval so that is what we have underlined here that not every open set is an open interval okay so we'll keep this in mind the next uh, examples obviously the subsets which are interesting which we have seen are the num number systems of uh, which are subsets of r so the set of positive integers the set of integers set of rational numbers and its complement the set of irrational numbers 
So what happens in these cases? So what I have done is I have plugged in the set of uh, positive integers, integers and rational numbers together because we have the same argument for all three of them. Suppose capital A is any one of these. Then I want to check whether capital A is an open set or not. So I have to take any point X in that set and I have to show whether it uh, is an interior point or not. So for that I have taken any epsilon greater than 0 and I am looking at the open interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon. So whether A is set of positive integers or integers or rational numbers it doesn't matter. If you look at the open interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon it will contain infinitely many rational irrational numbers because between any two real numbers we have seen that there are infinitely many irrational numbers so between x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon strictly between them there will be infinitely many irrational numbers whatever epsilon you choose so in any case this open interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon cannot be a subset of A because A does not have any irrational number. Notice. So this has infinitely many irrational numbers. So it cannot be a subset of A. So whatever epsilon I choose, I, this open interval cannot be a subset of A. So in particular, x cannot be an interior point of A. For it, little x would, would be an interior point of A if I was able to get at least one delta greater than zero for which the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta would have been a subset of A. But I am not able to get that. I am saying that whatever be the value of this epsilon positive number, this open interval will not be a subset of A. So I am not able to get any open interval containing X which is sitting inside A. So X cannot be an interior point of A and hence interior of A is an empty set. Now A is not an empty set. So therefore A is not open. This is true for any of these. What happens when you look at the set of irrational numbers? Again, same type of thing. Because whatever x you take an irrational number and whatever epsilon positive you take, if you look at the open interval x minus epsilon to x plus epsilon, that will contain infinitely many rational numbers now. So since it contains infinitely many rational numbers, it cannot be a subset of R minus Q, right? Because R minus Q is the set of all irrational numbers. So since any such open interval cannot be a subset of R minus Q, X cannot be an interior point of R minus Q. So no point of R minus Q is an interior point of R minus Q, which means that interior of R minus Q is empty. Hence, R minus Q is also not an open set. So none of these set of positive integers, set of integers, set of rational numbers, set of irrational numbers, none of these four are open. In fact, we have shown that the interior of any of these is an empty set. That is quite interesting. Okay. So now what we will do is after looking at these examples, of certain open sets and certain non-open sets, we will look at some results concerning open sets. The first one is that if I take any two subsets of R, A and B, if A is a subset of B, then interior A will be subset of interior B. So how do we prove that? First of all, if interior A is empty set, then it is automatically a subset of interior B. So that is the trivial statement. We have first seen that. Now suppose interior of A is non-empty. So there are two cases. One is when it is empty. One is when it is non-empty. If it is empty, then it is automatically true, trivial. And if it is non-empty, then we have to check. So take any X interior point of A. So by definition, there is a delta greater than zero so that open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is a subset of A. But A is a subset of B, right? So what do you get? That open interval x minus delta to x plus delta will be a subset of B also. So if you take any point in interior A, 
it will be a point of interior b so that is the meaning of interior a is a subset of interior b so we say that x was an arbitrary element when we had chosen randomly so that is precisely said as it was an arbitrary element of interior a so that proves that interior a is a subset of interior b clear so using this what you can show is that if i take any two subsets of r then interior of a union interior b will be a subset of interior a union b now this is just trivial actually once you have the previous result because a is a subset of a union b and b is also a subset of a union b so by what you have seen just now interior a is going to be a subset of interior a union b and interior b is also going to be a set of subset of interior a union b so if you take any point of interior a union interior b it will be either in interior a or in interior b so if it is in interior a then it will be a point of interior a union b or if it is a point of interior b then also it will be a point of interior a union b so this union interior a union interior b is going to be a subset of interior a union b always clear so the proof is simple once we have proved the previous one very good but uh, question is that is this subset uh, going to be uh, maybe uh, proper or not that is is it possible to somehow show that interior a union interior b equal to this always so what we are uh, giving an example for that is that it is not true that is interior a union interior b can be a proper subset of interior a union b so the only result which you are getting is that interior a union interior b is a subset of interior a union b you will not be generally able to prove the other way round that is you, it is possible that interior a union interior b is a proper subset of interior a union b so it is when we are saying it is possible what we have to do is we have to give one example where you are actually getting this so what we have done is we have chosen our a to be the set of rational numbers and b to be the set of irrational numbers then by what we saw just now that interior of rational numbers as well as interior of irrational numbers is empty so interior a as well as interior b is empty so interior a union interior b is going to be empty set very good what about a union b a is the set of rational numbers and b is the set of irrational numbers so a union b is the set of real numbers so therefore interior of a union b is what the set of real numbers so on the left hand side you get empty set and on the right hand side you get r so this is a proper subset so it is possible to get an example of two subsets of r which are uh, such that interior a union interior b is a proper subset of interior a union b i have made myself clear i hope next result for intersection tell shows you that here you actually get an equality that is if you take any two subsets a and b of r then interior a intersection b is going to be equal to interior a intersection interior b so again one part is easy by what we have already proved that a inter we know that a intersection b is a subset of a again a intersection b is a subset of b so interior of a intersection b is a subset of interior a this we have proved right and interior of a intersection b is a subset of interior b so therefore if you look at this interior a intersection b it is a subset of interior a as well as a subset of interior b that means it is a subset of interior a intersection interior b very good so now what we are claiming is that this is equal so we have to show the other way round also that is i have to take any point in interior a intersection interior b and show that that is a point of interior a intersection b 
So that is what we start with. Suppose I take any x in interior A, intersection interior B. Then since x is an interior point of A, I will be able to get a delta 1 positive so that open interval x minus delta 1 to x plus delta 1 is a subset of A. Similarly, since x is an interior point of B, I will be able to get a delta 2, some other uh, re positive real number, so that the open interval x minus delta 2 to x plus delta 2 is a subset of B. So what we will now do is that we will look at the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. Then this is a positive number. So be between this and 0, there are infinitely many real numbers. So choose any such delta. So what have you done? You have chosen delta positive, which is less than the minimum of delta 1 and delta 2. So what does that mean? That means that I have written it, uh, both of them together. So for that I have said, take any j between 1 and 2. Uh, sorry, take any j uh, which is either 1 or 2. Then you will get what? x minus delta j is less than x minus delta. Because delta j, whether it is delta 1 or delta 2, it is greater than delta. So minus of delta j is less than minus delta. So x minus delta j is less than x minus delta clear and this is less than this we have seen it many times that delta is positive implies x minus delta is less than x plus delta and also you have that x plus delta is less than x plus delta j because delta is less than delta j so this is true for both j, j equal to 1 as well as j is equal to 2 so what does that mean again this argument i have given many times that if you look at the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta, that will be a subset of, see this is a strict inequality, so it will be a proper subset of x minus delta 1 to x plus delta 1 and also a proper subset of x minus delta 2 to x plus delta 2. But what did you know about this one? You knew that open interval x minus delta 1 to x plus delta 1 is a subset of A and x minus delta 2 to x plus delta 2 is a subset of B. So you have automatically got that open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is a subset of A as well as x minus delta to x plus delta open interval is a subset of B. So it is a subset of A as well as a subset of B. So and B. So that means open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is a subset of A intersection. So what was your x? x was an arbitrary point in interior A intersection interior B. You have shown that you can find a delta positive so that open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is a subset of A intersection B. So therefore x is an interior point of A intersection B. So you had a arbitrary element of inter interior A intersection interior B. You have shown that that is an interior point of A intersection B. Hence you have proved that interior A intersection interior B is a subset of interior A intersection B. And you had already seen that interior of A intersection B is a subset of interior A intersection interior B. So you have seen it both ways. This is a subset of this. This is a subset of this. Hence, the, the two sets in question are equal. So you have proved that interior A intersection B is equal to interior A intersection interior B. Very good. Next result is that the arbitrary union of open sets is open. So what does that mean? That means that you take any family of open sets. So take certain number of open sets. How many is defined by this index set, lambda? This, this means capital lambda in Greek. Lambda is a Greek uh, alphabet. So this is capital lambda. So what we are trying to say is that look at such a collection. So here your indexing is going to depend on the, uh, is given by the set lambda and this lambda could be anything. It could be a countable set, it could be an uncountable set, it doesn't matter, it could be a finite set. So you are just looking at a collection of uh, open sets and how many uh, open sets you are looking at at any particular time is 
immaterial it doesn't matter so that is why we are saying arbitrary so take any indexing set lambda and look at a alpha uh, this collection a alpha all right so it is a family of open subsets of r and then what you do is take the union of all these a alphas so that you call suppose capital a then the theorem is that if each of these a alphas is open then capital a also has to be open that is what you want to prove so uh, how do you prove that you have to show that interior of a is a subset of a that is what what is our definition of open sets but uh, the trivial case we will first uh, discuss which is simple that if a is an empty set then a has to be open when can a be an empty set notice that it is a union of many sets so a is empty means all of these a alpha have to be empty because what are the elements of a they are the all the elements any element of a has to belong to a alpha so if a is empty if we are making such a claim it means the a alphas have have to be empty for every alpha so it may be possible that the Uh, family of open sets which you have taken consists only of the empty set in which case also the union will be empty set and therefore it will be open i think it is clear so what is the next case the next case is when a is non empty so if a is non empty then you take any point in the set a and show that it is an interior point of a then you will be able to claim that a is open so start with an x in a now x belongs to a means x belongs to union a alpha alpha and lambda right so uh, you just observe this notation it since lambda is not uh, uh, a finite set or it uh, suppose lambda were, were in were a finite set so then i could have written it something like a1 union a2 union etc and if it was the set of uh, positive integers say uh, then you could have written union n equal to 1 to infinity an but we are not uh, restricting ourselves to that so we are not able to express it uh, in that fashion uh, we have to write it like this that union of a alpha alpha and lambda means you take the all the Uh, sets a alpha look at all the elements of that and construct a set which consists of all those elements that is the meaning of this notation so i have an element x in a means x is in the union so if x is in the union it should belong to at least one of the a alphas so that is what we have written there exists alpha and lambda there may be more than one so that x belongs to a alpha now if x belongs to a alpha what do we know about a alpha a alpha is open this is a family of open subsets so since x is in a alpha means x is an interior point of a alpha so therefore i will be able to get a delta positive so that open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is a subset of a alpha now a alpha is a subset of a because a is the union of all these so therefore automatically this open interval x minus delta to x plus delta will be a subset of a hence x is an interior point of a clear so the argument is quite uh, straight forward that if you have any arbitrary collection of open sets then if you look at its union then that that will also be an open set you have just proved it by showing first of all you have uh, looked at the case when it the union is empty then it is already open and if it is non empty then if you take any point in the union that will be an interior point of the union therefore a is a, the union is an open set that is what we have proved next result is about intersection in intersection we cannot take arbitrariness what we can prove is that if you look at the finite intersection of open sets then that will be open so how do you prove that again you start with uh, 
finitely many open sets. I have called them A1, A2, AN and look at its intersection. So suppose capital A is equal to A1 intersection, A2 intersection, etc. AN. Then I want to show that capital A is an open set. So again, look at the trivial case first that when A is empty, then automatically A is open. So the interesting case is when A is non-empty, then what will you do is you take any point in A and show that it is an interior point of A that will prove that A is an open set. So call that point little x. So suppose x is a point in A. Now what is A? A is the intersection of A1, A2, etc. A n. Therefore, it will belong to A1, it will belong to A2, and so on, it will belong to A n. And what are A1, A2, A n? They are open sets. So since x belongs to A1, it is an open uh, it is an interior point of A1. Similarly, it is an interior point of A2. Similarly, it is an interior point of all of them. So x is an interior point of A high for any i from 1 to n. So it is possible to get a positive delta i depending on the set a i that for which the open interval x minus delta i to x plus delta i will be a subset of a i. I am clear here because each of these a i's are open and x will be a point of a i so I will be able to get such delta i's. Now what will I do? I want to show that x is an interior point of a. So Plain and simple, you look at delta 1, delta 2, etc., delta n, and look at the minimum of that. So, we had given some such argument earlier also. There, what we did was that I, uh, since this number is positive, so between 0 and this number, there are infinitely many numbers, and you choose one. That is what the type of argument which we were giving. Here, I have given the argument in slightly different way. So, the reason is that I want to say that this will also work. That I will just look at the minimum of delta 1, delta 2, delta n. That is going to be a positive number because these are all uh, positive numbers and there are only finitely many of them. So the minimum is also a positive number that I have forgotten to write. So delta is going to be greater than 0. And not only that, <coughs> my arguments as before, you can see that x minus delta to x plus delta is going to be a subset of x minus delta i to x plus delta i for any i between 1 to n. So the only thing is that if I had chosen delta to be strictly less than the minimum of these numbers, positive number, then what would have happened was this would have been a proper subset. But uh, that is not necessary. So uh, in this particular argument, what we have done is instead of taking delta to be a positive number strictly less than minimum of this, we have taken delta to be a positive number exactly equal to these guys, uh, this number, minimum of delta 1 to delta. So in that case, we will get what x minus delta to x plus delta will be a subset of this. But what do we know about this open interval x minus delta i to x plus delta i? That is a subset of ai. So that is sufficient for our purpose. That open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is a subset of a i. And this is true for all i from 1 to n. So what does that mean? That open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is a subset of a1 intersection a2 intersection etc. a n. That is x minus delta to x plus delta open interval is actually a subset of a. So by definition of interior of A, you have shown that X is an interior point of A, right? So if you have any point of A that is an interior point of A, that means that capital A is an open set. So once you have proved this result, the natural question which arises is that why did we have to take finite intersection? For union, we could take any random uh, family countable uncountable finite whatever and we showed that the union of such a family of open sets is open for intersection we have to be very careful and take only finitely many so we will give the reasoning why we have to do that by looking at two examples the first example is 
that arbitrary intersections of open intersection of open sets may not be open so this example what i have done is i i'm looking at open interval minus 1 by n to 1 by n for any positive integer n so let us uh, look at this uh, picture we have tried to show some of them if i take n equal to 1 it becomes open interval minus 1 to 1 if i take n equal to 2 i get minus half to half if i take n equal to 3 i get minus one third to one third and so on so what i am trying to say is that if you if i look at the intersection of this it is going to be exactly equal to the singleton zero first of all you notice that a n are open sets that is fine that is not a problem because these are all open intervals i want to say that intersection is the singleton zero if i can show this that means that the intersection cannot be an open set because we have seen that non empty finite sets are not open right so how will we see that if you take any x greater than 0 then it is uh, one way to see this is by intuition you can see that this is shrinking right after that you'll get minus 1 fourth to 1 fourth then minus 1 fifth to fifth 1 fifth and so on so it is shrinking to this point 0 uh, these particular intervals and so you cannot expect to get anything more than that so that is a little bit of hand waving if you want to make it precise here hand waving is very important in mathematics by the way but uh, right now since the argument is simple i have just given it also in detail that suppose i take any x positive then look at uh, the number x and one then by archimedean property of real numbers there is a positive integer n so that nx is greater than 1. So that means that x will be greater than 1 by n. So x cannot belong to a n. So there is at least 1 n so that x cannot belong to a n. So if I take any positive number, it cannot belong to the intersection of a n. Because you have found 1 a n so that x, doesn't, x is not an element of that. So it cannot belong to the intersection. Intersection means it should belong to every a n. So whatever positive number you take, you will be able to get an a n so that it does not belong to that. So that is, x, if x is somewhere here, then you will be able to get a 1 by n, which is less than x. That is the crucial thing. Similarly, if you take a negative number, then look at the positive number minus x and 1. Again, apply the Archimedean property. What do you get? That there is a positive integer m, so that m times minus x will be greater than 1. That is, minus mx will be greater than 1. So, what does that mean? x is minus x is greater than 1 by m. So, what does that mean? That means x is less than minus 1 by m. Clear? You will be able to get a m such so that m times minus x is greater than 1. So, that means that minus x is greater than 1 by m because m is positive. So, that means if you have multiply by minus 1 on both sides that x is less than minus 1 by m so whatever negative number you take here it will be less than some minus 1 by m for uh, m a positive integer so it means that x cannot be an element of capital a m so it cannot belong to the intersection so whatever positive number you take it cannot belong to the intersection whatever negative number you take it cannot belong to the intersection and 0 obviously is in the intersection. So the intersection is exactly equal to the singleton 0. And singleton 0 is not an open set. Therefore, you have got an arbitrary intersection of open sets, an example of that, which is not open. The next example says that we cannot make a theorem of this. That is, we cannot say that arbitra arbitrary intersection of open sets will not be open. We cannot say that. Why? Because there are examples of arbitrary intersection of open sets which may be open. So, again, we have given one example here. Now, I have taken my Bn's to be minus 1 minus 1 by n to 1 plus 1 by n for every positive integer n. So, these open intervals are obviously open sets. And uh, you observe, first of all, 
uh, that okay even before observing just look at what is what are these sets looking like so if you put n equal to 1 here it becomes minus 1 minus 1 so it starts from minus 2 and goes to 2 so it is open interval minus 2 to 2 b1 is that what is b2 b2 is going to be minus 3 by 2 to 3 by 2 what is b3 b3 is going to be minus 4 third to 4 third then what is going to be your b4 it is going to be minus 5 by 4 to plus 5 by 4 i'm uh, clear uh, what is happening here so you see that the uh, intervals are again shrinking but they will shrink till minus 1 to 1 that is what i want to stress so if you write down proper uh, analytically what do you get minus 1 minus 1 by n this is always less than minus 1 clear and minus 1 is obviously less than 1 and 1 is always less than 1 plus 1 by n so this open interval minus 1 to 1 is going to be a subset of bn for all n that much is true and what we want to say is that anything less than minus 1 will not be in the intersection anything greater than 1 will not be in the intersection the same type of argument is clear here also that if you take any thing here you will be able to get an n so that 1 plus 1 by n will be less than that so we have proved it uh, in details let us see that if you take x greater than 1 then look at the positive number x minus 1 and look at 1 apply archimedean property there is a positive integer n so that n times x minus 1 will be greater than 1 so what does that mean let us do some calculation here x minus 1 is greater than 1 by 1 1 by n so x is uh, greater than 1 plus 1 by n clear x minus 1 is greater than 1 by n so that means x is greater than 1 plus 1 by n so x cannot be an element of bn all right similarly if you take x less than minus 1 then look at your uh, number x plus 1 x plus 1 is a negative number c so look at minus of x plus 1 that is a positive number so by and look at 1 then by archimedean property again there is a positive integer m so that m times minus of x plus 1 will be greater than 1. so that is what i have written here. so now let us do some calculations which i have not bothered to write in detail what does this mean this means that x plus 1 negative of that so minus of x plus 1 is greater than 1 by m that is minus x minus 1 is greater than 1 by m so that means minus x is greater than 1 plus 1 by m so uh, just multiply by minus you will get x is less than minus 1 minus 1 by m i hope this is not so difficult so what you had was the negative number x plus 1 so you look at minus of x plus 1 for that you will be able to get a m so that m times minus x plus 1 is greater than 1 that means that minus x plus 1 minus of x plus 1 is greater than 1 by m that is minus x minus 1 is greater than 1 by m so that means minus x is greater than 1 plus 1 by m so that means x is less than minus 1 minus 1 by m what does that prove that proves that x cannot be an element of bm so if x is greater than 1 then it cannot be in the intersection if x is less than minus 1 it cannot be the in, in the intersection hence the intersection is precisely equal to open interval minus 1 to 1 hence what have you got that if you look at the intersection of bns this is actually an open set so what have you proved that arbitrary intersection of open sets may or may not be open okay so we'll do two more results and then stop the first one is that the interior of any subset of r is open so take any subset of r first of all and you have to show that interior of a is open so if interior of a is empty set then obviously interior of a is open right by our convention 
Next, you let that interior of A is non-empty. What do you have to show? That if you take any point X in interior A, it will be an interior point of interior A. So, let us start doing it. If you have X as an interior point of A, that by definition means that I will be able to get a delta positive so that the open interval X minus delta to X plus delta is a subset of A. Very good. Now you take any point in x minus delta to x plus delta open interval. We know that x minus delta to x plus delta open interval is an open set. We have seen this. Therefore, y will be an interior point of this open interval. So I will be able to find some epsilon greater than 0 so that open interval y minus epsilon to y plus epsilon will be a subset of x minus delta to x plus delta. So, and that is a subset of A. So, I have been able to find an epsilon greater than 0. So, that open interval y minus epsilon to y plus epsilon is a subset of A. What does that mean by definition that y is actually an interior point of A? Now, what was y? y was any element of open interval x minus delta to x plus delta. And we have shown that it has to be a point of interior A. So, what we have proved is that the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta has to be a subset of interior A. Now, what was x? x was any point in interior A. For that, we have shown that there has to be exist, <coughs> excuse me, a delta greater than 0 so that the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta will be a subset of interior A. What does that prove? By definition, that x has to be an interior point of interior A, right? So, any point of interior A has to be an interior point of interior A. So, interior A is an open set. Clear? So, whatever subset you take, whether that is open or not, is immaterial, that is not of importance. Whatever subset of R you take, interior of that set is always going to be an open set. This is what we will remember. Okay. And the final result here is that if I take any subset of R and if I take any open subset B of uh, A, so A is any subset of R and B is a subset of A and suppose that B is open, then B has to be a subset of interior A. In uh, other words, you can say that interior A is the largest open set contained in A, which means precisely this, that if you have an open subset of A, then it has to be a subset of interior. Proof is very straightforward and simple. That first of all, we always look at the trivial case. When B is an empty set, then it is automatically a subset of interior. No problems. Suppose B is non-empty, then take any element of B, you have to show that it is an interior point of A. So since B is open, we are assuming, X in B is going to be an interior point of B. So there is a delta greater than 0, so that X minus delta to X plus delta, this open interval is a subset of B, and we al already know that B is a subset of A. So, the open interval x minus delta to x plus delta is going to be a subset of A. Hence, by definition, x is an interior point of A. So, you have chosen any point of B, you have shown that it is an interior point of A. That means that B is a subset of interior A. Therefore, you have shown that interior A is the largest open subset contained in A. Because interior A is a subset of A. Okay. So, I think uh, all this is clear and uh, in the next lecture, we will uh, talk about uh, closed sets. Uh, hopefully, uh, you have understood what I tried to explain here.